Welcome back. We have Brad Hudson with our Village Management Services update, and here you are. Thanks. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here again, and uh, uh, I wanted to to take this opportunity to start off with to um, acknowledge the events uh, of last week, which were quite uh, tragic, right. um, uh, particularly for uh, family and friends uh, uh, of the individual involved, as well as for the first responders who, who were required to use uh, uh, significant force to, to bring the situation under control. And I also wanted to thank um, uh, our residents uh, who were very uh, inconvenienced by all this and we, we put together uh, some uh, plans to get them to their manners and to, to get them some food and to make that happen and, and they, were, they were so gracious. Uh, in their inconvenience, and and um, and I, I wanted to thank those residents, and also to the staff members who stayed late and and, and helped uh, shuttle those residents back and forth, provide some entertainment and food during this very, very tragic event. Mm -hmm. So, I want to lead with that, and, and again, uh, I'm, I'm very sorry this happened to our village, uh, but in, in times of of great stress and difficulty, I think our true character shows through, and. And I, uh, I got a good glimpse uh, of the character of, of this village and its residents and employees, and that part uh, made me feel good. So with that, we always learn from these as well. And so as you have a, an event that maybe doesn't, uh, you're not um, planned as well as you, you would like, then it gets an opportunity for growth. And so we're reviewing some of the, uh, the issues that occurred during that day and during the event and the aftermath and, and, and look forward to sharing some of our uh, thoughts and insights uh, with the board as we move forward. For certain, we're gonna look at gate four and see how we can make that a better emergency gate for both uh, ingress and egress in the future. And so that'll be a change that I think uh, will prepare us well for certainly that area south uh, of the creek in the future. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then I, I did wanna, want to highlight, maybe it's appropriate to talk about some of the security initiatives we're working on, some of the big challenges we have. Um, before I do that though, I would once again, and I know uh, Chief Moy has been uh, promoting a campaign of see something, say something. Right. And I would just encourage residents once again, if you see something out there and it looks unusual or feels wrong, then, then please share it with security. And even if you're wrong nine out of ten times, that one time could save a life or property uh, or who knows what, but please uh, uh, share your concerns and issues with us uh, regardless uh, of whether at the time you think, well, maybe I'm overreacting. No, you're not. Right. Well, uh, if they have a gut feeling or sometimes they're afraid. Sometimes people are afraid to come forward, but I, right. I think your advice is... Well, I don't want... Okay. Don't feel... Uh, like a snitch, mm. you're helping a fellow resident and many fellow residents oftentimes right. by identifying unusual circumstances that are, that are happening. Mm -hmm. This is a fairly stable community, so if something looks out of the ordinary, it probably is. Right. There's, there's a reason to take a look. Right. So I wanted to share a little bit of what we're doing uh, security-wise. Obviously the big, the big project and the big security initiative this year is the gate arms. And right. so we are, I think we have some pictures of that. We're moving forward with this kind of technology at all of the gates. Mm -hmm. um, it'll probably take us the full year to, to get this implemented, maybe even a little bit longer. Uh, each one of the gates is a distinct individual installation. It has to be designed uh, given the characteristics of, of each area. Okay. So, so that's what we're looking at. Uh, prior to doing this though, we have to go and remodel all the gates uh, yeah, so they can accept the technology that right. we're trying to deploy. So this one in particular, Clubhouse 2, we had talked about last time. Right, right. <laughs> this is probably our worst gate and you can see some dry rot there and and just some uh, old air conditioning unit, some sort of uh, unusual kind of jerry-rigged electrical service and so we want to update that provide appropriate, oh here, I, this is my favorite picture, maybe of all time here, where you can uh, take care of business and have a nice drink of water at the same time. Um, that's an unusual design. I suspect we won't replicate that in the remodel right. of this. Um, 
<laughs> well, when, when you remodel this, though, are you going to take everything out and you know update it? I, yeah, we'll it update that with okay. with we'll do probably some uh, uh, a new water heater, new bathroom fixtures, a new electrical service, LED lights, and then obviously bring in uh, conduit and, and infrastructure to support the technology that we want to uh, to deploy it at okay. this gate and others. Here's gate 10 and okay. it's, uh, it's a little bigger than the other one but it's still it has a lot of dry rot and other dysfunction mm -hmm. and and we'll go ahead and and get that remodeled. I hear from these ambassadors a lot because most of the gates have been remodeled um, oh, but and they don't want to be in this, this gate they want to go work in the other gate. Yeah this one <laughs> <laughs> this one hasn't um, and so we'll we'll get in there and if you remember I talked about this last week but to construct a whole new gate with all the infrastructure and everything it, it could be anywhere between 500,000 and a million dollars Wow! and so we're remodeling these gates for less than 25,000 Wow! and so it's a huge savings for the community mm -hmm. um, I think at the end of the day we'll have around uh, 10 or 11 of these that that we remodel as opposed to building a new mm -hmm. and so that will that will save a lot of money for the community and and um, um, have resources that can be applied to other projects of importance. So right. yeah, it's very uh, it's a very important project. It's really the highest priority mm -hmm. for VMS, for the mutuals, for GRF. It is really uh, what we're putting the biggest part of our effort into. And so you'll see uh, the engineers out there. We have a, a contracted engineering firm who's taking measurements and. Mm -hmm and doing a lot of survey work and so uh, uh, don't be alarmed uh, we're not we're not going to change the hours of a gate or a lot of times when people see residency uh, staff or consultants out measuring a gate they think oh my god something they're going to change something no mm -hmm. we're just evaluating how to best fit the gate arms and the cameras and all the technology into the space that we have right and so that's what's going on there good so I, I oh, wonder, oh, look at this. A new issue. Yes, I wanted to highlight this as well, and it kind of ties into security. Um, we have a huge problem with, I'll call it illegal dumping, for lack of a better word, but placing a, a large materials that won't fit in, into the bins mm -hmm. in the, in the uh, area oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, of the trash receptacles. And here you'll see a number of mattresses and, and other items that tend to get put out and couches so mostly big items they're mostly big items so you do right. see computers and microwaves uh, old uh, analog TVs so it's a whole array of things but it does a number of things number one um, waste management won't pick these up except on the third Saturday of the month so oh. What we've started doing, because there's so much of this going on, mm -hmm. is I send a crew around okay. uh, to pick these items up because I don't want them sitting there for three weeks until right. waste management will pick them up. And mm -hmm. so we've ended up uh, collecting a lot of this material, mm -hmm. and it is a cost that really shouldn't be absorbed by the community. Mm -hmm. It is a waste management cost, and so by putting these things out and requiring me to hire a crew to go pick them up, that cost is now absorbed by the community right. when it need not be. So I implore residents, please don't put things out in uh, the area of the, of the of trash enclosures. Either wait till the third Saturday, mm -hmm. which is fine. My preference is call resident services and we'll arrange an individual pickup right from your manor. So you don't need to drag it down here. You don't need to go down the stairs. You don't need to stack it or have a, have a neighbor or friends help you with it. You just call resident services. Okay. They'll arrange the pickup for you. And waste management will come right to your manor, take, a, take okay. the item out and put it on their truck at mm -hmm. their cost mm -hmm. and remove it from the community. So why don't you think people are doing that now? What, 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 what is well, the situation? Well, I, I think, number one, that takes a little bit of effort. Mm -hmm. You have to call. Uh, you have to make an appointment. You have to be home. Someone has Timing. to come over. And, and so it's a little a little more elaborate process. Okay. And also maybe it, it'll take a day or two before they can get out. Right. And so I think generally, uh, if I know my wife, when something is in the house that she wants out, she really doesn't usually give me a day or two. You know, it's out <laughs> in the garage and then it's, you know, off somewhere right. at the right time. 
Um, obviously, many of our residents don't have garages and they, they can't mm -hmm. really stage this material, so there's an immediacy. But um, there's consequences of doing this right. uh, that I want to show you next. Um, let's see if they'll get that. But yes, our guys get most of this material mm -hmm. and, and they put it in a two large, I mean, these are the largest dumpsters you've ever seen up in uh, maintenance. We mm -hmm. fill up two of these. They're, they're very big, like the size of a semi-truck. Wow. And we fill up two of them, I think, every week That's with this stuff. material. And I've got two guys that basically drive around and pick it up. And wow. so it's a huge expense to the community mm -hmm. uh, that, that really shouldn't occur. But also, some of this material gets picked up by others before we have the opportunity to get it. And so here you see an area along a uh, ridge route, mm -hmm. uh, kind of directly east of the, the dog park there, where some of this material tends to end up and we, we get uh, a lot of homeless individuals mm. who, who, this is a, can be a very short wall here along, this actually can get as low as three feet with three okay. feet of bob wire on top of it. Oh. And we do have individuals and you could see here if you stepped on that couch there and then onto the wall you could well even could some easily. of the trees you could sort of jump onto a right. ledge there and we have a tree, a <clears throat> right now we have a big program that's getting ready to kick off with uh, third mutual to uh re here's some more material here mm -hmm. to remove most of this vegetation on the outside of the wall mm -hmm. Uh, to raise the canopy to a, to a much higher level, to create some visual uh, ability through there, right. and then to replace this barbed wire with, with steel shepherd's crooks. Oh. And so that project, we've been talking to third board, we're doing the preliminary work right now, I think that the residents should be aware that that's gonna start uh, in, the, in the near future. Right. Where, and again, the first phase, we've already picked up most of this stuff. Right. Um, uh, and then we're going to trim back this vegetation away from the wall, raise the canopy, and then mm -hmm. the shepherd's crooks will come thereafter. So I would say within, you can see how dense this is. It, it's right. very, very woody. Uh, and so people get back there, they can't be seen. And yeah. so- Yeah, it, looks like, it uh, looks like people are definitely living there. Oh, there's no question. Um, and then I have security going through there and, and, and moving them along uh, mm -hmm. periodically. So we're doing some of that. I think once we get it cleared out, and get the shepherd's crooks, uh, then we'll be in much better position. The community will be much, much more secure. Well, uh, yeah, and you don't want the folks from the outside trying to come in and vice, you know, vice versa and making it kind of their home. And then where do most of the homeless folks come from? Well, um, it's a very uh, diverse group. Um, it's, it, it's, a, it's veterans, it's folks uh, who have substance abuse, uh, mental mm -hmm. illness, uh, you have disaffected youth. Uh, uh, there's so many, uh, homelessness can't really be categorized in this, this, or this. It's a very diverse group. Right. And I think what you're seeing here is uh, a lot of enforcement uh, by other jurisdictions. Okay. The cities, county, others. Uh, and so typically these individuals uh, will migrate to the area of least resistance. Mm. And typically that will be down maybe in the Santa Ana River or other places where you don't have a lot of, of people to complain. Mm -hmm. And so here, you know, along Ridge Route, it's right. kind of out of sight, it's, it's brushy. And, right. and so if not for, for our security team, uh, you know, we wouldn't know that was going on and we wouldn't be putting that pressure on them like we are now. Right. Um, but a big thing is, and many of these folks need to be connected to services, um, whether that be the VA or drug and alcohol services, many of them right. are seniors. And so right. the county has the bulk of the responsibility for providing services to the homeless. And so we wanna make sure that through social service, our social services mm -hmm. department, you know, through security and compliance that we, we make those kind of referrals and get these folks the services that they want. Right. Unfortunately, there are, is a large uh, population of individuals who just like this kind of lifestyle mm. and they don't want to accept services. They just want to want to live that way. And so right. they become the more difficult group to deal with because it's really a choice 
mm -hmm. they're making and they're very resistant to any kind of assistance. So if residents see this kind of thing, please let call security, know, right. let them know, and, and we'll, we call the city, actually around here, it's a couple of cities that mm -hmm. we abut, mm -hmm. but we call the cities, we call the county, we bring in uh, our social services to, to connect these individuals with county programs and services, so it's a, it's a real uh, dynamic approach, mm -hmm. and, and the biggest thing is for us to know what's going on. Right. Fortunately, most of most of the encampments we're aware of, we know where they go, and and sometimes they're very brazen. Like we had some recent uh, sort of encampments right on El Toro mm. uh, against our wall, mm -hmm. and we were able to move those folks uh, along, right. and and they were uh, availed of some county services. Right. So. And and once you get that all cleaned up, when did you say that was going to start? Well, I think we'll probably we're right now we're just. Uh, mobilizing the, the landscape piece, okay. but I suspect it'll be a month or so before we get going on that and, and all the other pieces will follow. So okay. we've got to get the landscaping cleaned up there. It's a little bit of no man's land, kind of like the dog park, mm -hmm. where it, originally that was intended to be where Ridge Route was going to be located. Mm -hmm. Well, at some point down the road, it was realigned mm -hmm. to its current location. And so this road right of way sits there with really no care and maintenance. And so right now we're assessing that and, and dealing with, uh, we're the underlying property owner, but there's easements and things on top of that that need to be dealt with with various jurisdictions who build and plan roads in mm -hmm. Orange County. And so okay. we're dealing with them, but it's obviously not gonna be a road because right. they moved it yeah. uh, to the north. Um, so that's, that's why this is in this condition. It's been that way for 50 years. There's been people living back there for right. many, many, many years. Right. And so we're gonna put an end to that. Okay. And it starts with cleaning out the landscaping mm -hmm. and then of course the shepherd's crooks and then security patrols. And then security. It's a very easy area to patrol if it's cleared out. So you can right. drive right along that alley there and see in there. Right. Unfortunately, that is also an area with the very lowest walls in our community. Oh. Some as low as three or four feet. Right, right. And so that's why, why we need to put the shepherd's crooks in to, to get some elevation there and also as a, as a deterrent. So. Well, very good information. Uh, thank you for updating us. And the whole security thing I think is very important and I know the residents are very excited to hear about that. Well, Especially so with things like this going on. Yes, it's our very highest priority. And I think when you have, uh, changes in the in the homeless environment in other jurisdictions and you right. see this kind of migration into our community you you can see the importance of addressing this kind of long neglected area right. uh, i think the security gates will help but the biggest help will come from our residents when they don't put things out by the trash bins right. um, don't leave bicycles are the favorite target mm. of virtually every thief and 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 uh, thievery within the homeless community is not uncommon mm -hmm. and they like bicycles a lot too. Right. And so please don't leave bicycles unsecured on your patios, on your carports, other places um, because uh, folks will, will take them. And it may not just be the homeless, it probably won't be, it'll probably be someone's son or grandson who's visiting the community oh, uh, uh, on parole or probation and they decide to take a bike while they're visiting. We find that most of the crime we have, petty crime in the community, is committed by somebody's relative. Oh. And mm -hmm. so secure your items mm -hmm. uh, within your car, within your manor, on your patio or balcony, um, and we'll have far, far fewer uh, problems. And, okay. and when you do have a problem, let us know right of way. Because right. we, we have, on occasion, a retrieve many of these items right. and so if we know what they are it's easier to retrieve and actually right. we actually had some items that were taken a while back and somebody was arrested in Dana Point and because because the resident had reported it we had a list of what those items are and mm. they pulled somebody over in Dana Point and our residents items oh. were in that car Wow! and so if we know what's going on right. most of the time we can we can solve the problem right so, well, they call resident services to get those things taken care of, or security if they Security if it's any kind of security okay. matter, or if you have suspicion that there, something's not right, maybe some criminal or other activity. And remember that security isn't just security. They also uh, uh, are the department that manages social services right. and compliance. So right. uh, 
uh, a call to security uh, will get a lot of services and will, can address a lot of issues. Excellent. Thanks for the update. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure we'll being here we'll see you next again. time, and hopefully we'll have some new photos and show some uh, good cleanup. I, I've got some really interesting photos that I've been okay. working on I'm going to bring <laughs> next time. <laughs> Excellent. All right. We'll be right back after this.